Alright, hello everyone, Dino Mike Gaming here, and I wanted to do a reaction video to this video by Shepsky Dad. Uh, it's got 378,000 views on it, and it is the worst Gen 1 Pokemon. And I'm actually interested to find out which Pokemon actually sucked in Gen 1. Gen 1 is my favorite, honestly. I grew up with it, and after Gen 2, I kind of started falling out of Pokemon. So basically, to put it simply, I would replay red, blue, yellow over and over and over again. And sure, I, I would play silver and gold as well, but I really like those original games. And when you beat, I believe, the, the second gen games, you could go back to Kanto, if I'm uh, not mistaken. I hope I have that right. What is the first? It's Kanto. I got it right. What is Johto then? I was right. I was right this whole time. I sounded like an idiot for the first 30 seconds of this video. But whatever. The point is, and I'll edit the video <laughs> to the points that matter. I would always go with Pokemon that I thought looked cool and not necessarily were any good. So I want to see in this list if there are any Pokemon that I would continuously use that aren't any good. And I'll know from now on not to use them. So let's watch this video by Shepsky Dad. I'm excited. Ah, Generation 1. If you're like me, chances are you've watched a lot of content on these games, whether that's speedruns, solo too. runs, or through the countless videos documenting all the weird glitches and bugs these games brought with them. And while the original 151 Pokemon will always hold a special place in our hearts, the unfortunate truth is that Generation 1 didn't give all these Pokemon a fair and fighting chance in their debut. In fact, there's a few Pokemon that, quite frankly, you shouldn't use at all. Today, I'll be going over some of those Pokemon and tell you why, in my opinion, they are some of the worst Gen 1 Pokemon. But what exactly do I mean when I say worst Gen 1 Pokemon? I mean, I could just pull up the list of Pokemon with the lowest base stat total and call it a yeah. day, right? Yeah, that wouldn't be very interesting. Instead, <laughs> I've looked through all of Gen 1 to see which Pokemon are simply not worth using based on either stats, moves, in-game locations, and so on. Some may be bad because better options are available, and some may just be bad in general. To avoid potentially over-explaining myself here, I'll just get started with the Pokemon that inspired the idea for this list, Pidgeot. Oh my god, the first Pokemon is the one I always use. I actually just wanted to pause the video to let you guys know, someone did a full remake on Yellow. I don't remember their name, maybe I'll drop it in the, in the uh, description. But they basically remade Yellow and they made everything better about it. You can now see your experience points, full color, new sprites. Uh, the trainers have different Pokemon, like the whole nine yards, and I want to play that play that on my channel at some point. I think that'd be really fun. But Pidgeot, of course, being the first Pokemon, I always use Pidgeot. I, I always catch a Pidgey early on, and that's usually the bird I go to. So of course it stinks. Like a lot of people, I'm a big fan of the regional birds, and I always try to use one on a brand new playthrough. And I'll admit, Pidgeot isn't the worst bird we've had. Unfortunately, it gets overshadowed by another one, that being Firo. Looking at their stats, while Pidgeot is bulkier overall, that's really where its positives stop. Firo is not only faster, but it hits harder. Yeah. And this higher attack is even more important when you get into the moves. Firo gets the powerful Drill Peck at level 34. Meanwhile, your first Damn, that's for powerful. Pidgey is Wing Attack at level 28. Uh, and that's nothing. only if you don't evolve Pidgey, otherwise it's at level 31 when you have Pidgeotto. At least Spearow starts with Peck, which is incredibly helpful while you're waiting for Drill Peck. Yeah. Oh, and I hope you like Wing Attack on the Pidgey line, because it's your only flying move by level up. I don't Other know why that, they did that. with Gust and Quick Attack, both base 40 power moves. And you better get comfortable with base 40 power moves, because they are the strongest moves you will be getting through level Why is Gust not a flying move? Level Can up. someone explain that to it me? It can't be all bad in the moves department though, right? Maybe Pidgeot gets a helpful status move that gives it the edge over Firo. Maybe a helpful TM? Well, don't hold your breath, because the only moves Pidgeot gets that Firo doesn't are Sand Attack, Whirlwind, and Reflect through TM. Their learn sets are otherwise identical. Oof. Pidgeot just doesn't have anything over Firo outside of its slightly better defenses. I mean, you could obtain it earlier, but not by much. And if all you're able to use are normal moves between obtaining Pidgey and obtaining Spiro, you might as well just use Rattata for its better attack and speed. Spearow also evolves into Firo <laughs> at level 20. Meanwhile, you have to wait until level 18 just to yeah. get Pidgeotto, and then 36. And alone level 36 for Pidgeot. And this level disparity is even worse when you realize that Firo is in the medium fast EXP group and that Pidgeot is in the medium slow group. Ugh. On all accounts, it just there just gets isn't worse. a reason to use Bird Jesus, as sad as it is to say. And the final nail in the coffin is that Firo, 
the Pokemon I've been saying is better than Pidgeot, also gets overshadowed. If you're willing to hold off on a bird for the first part of the game, you can get Doduo and eventually Dodrio, who is faster than and hits harder than Firo. Wow. Plus, it also gets Drill Peck and Tri Attack by level Jeez. up. Jeez. These factors just leave Pidgeot behind. I don't think or I've ever Pidgeot. used Doduo. At least or it's still better than Farfetch'd. Best Next Pokemon up on the I don't list use. is a water type. As one of the most common types in the game, it's hard water. for all water types to stand out. I love water types. Especially when there's a 1 in 3 chance you chose Squirtle to start the game. Chose. <laughs> At first, I went through the water types and realized that there are several that simply aren't worth going out of your way to get. However, upon reevaluation, I, I knew that there was three. only one that truly deserved to be called out as one of the worst on the generation, Slowpoke? and that's Dugong. Oh, well, I can Dugong. make comparisons to several water types to show Dugong's inadequacy. I never used Dugong or Seal, so... Well, actually, are they part of the same line? I think they are. I'm not... There's one in particular that does this very well, and that's Lapras. I love Lapras. At a glance, okay. it's pretty Glad easy I to see why Lapras. Lapras is objectively better. Stats-wise, Dugong's only better stat is Speed, which is oh. only 10 points higher, which isn't a big difference considering the limited roster of Generation 1. Plus, with the better defense you get from Lapras, it means you're going to be taking hits much better than Dugong anyways, so it's not the worst thing if it gets outsped. Looking at moves, it only gets worse. Dugong may get an Ice move 3 levels before Lapras does, but unfortunately it gets Aurora Beam, while Lapras gets Ice Beam. Oh, and unless you shoot. want to wait until level 56 to get Ice Beam on Dugong, you might as well get the TM from the Celadon department store anyways. 56? Speaking of TMs, wow. Lapras gets amazing coverage with Thunderbolt and Psychic, while Dugong gets... Payday? <laughs> yup, Payday is the only TM that Dugong gets that Lapras The Meowth doesn't. move. Super helpful, I know. And after all that, I haven't gotten to the worst part. Dugong and its pre-evolution seal are only available at the Seafoam Islands, which you need Surf to reach. So even before you can catch this water type for your team, you need another water type just to get to it. I was right, it's seal and Dugong. See, I would never get them anyway because they're probably so late game that I already had two or three water types that I love. I didn't even bother with them. You know who'd be great for that? Lapras. Lapras. Yeah. Lapras is a gift Pokemon in the Sylph Company right next to the rival fight. That's right. So not only can you get it before Dugong, but it's literally a gift. You don't even have to go out of your way for it. It's on the path to finishing the game already. And all this goes without saying that the Seafoam Islands are a completely optional area anyways. Dugong is one of those Pokemon I've always wanted to like, but it seems like it was created for the purpose of being mediocre. Hell, even though I'm telling you not yeah. to use it, I doubt if anybody has ever used it outside of a randomizer. Dugong is just Ouch. truly worse Lapras. Ooh! Next up, we sure have what should have been a rivalry, turned out to be a landslide victory. We have okay. Hitmonchan versus Hitmonlee. Two Pokemon available I for you to choose in the pick, fighting dojo. I always pick Hitmonlee. Is Hitmonlee really the bad one? Which one do you go with? If this were Generation 4 and beyond, this would be a different conversation. Really? But okay. unfortunately, there is no physical special split between moves yet meaning that Hitmonchan is stuck as the worse option. Oh, I always would pick the good know, one. Hitmonchan gets the elemental punches by level up, which are normally great coverage moves. That is, unless they're coming off a measly 35 base special. Ooh. This is so laughably weak that it's better to use either a normal or fighting move in almost every situation. Oh, and speaking of fighting moves, Hitmonchan gets a whopping one by level up. At level 53, it gets counter which in Generation 1 only works if you were hit by a fighting or normal move. Oh, Meanwhile, wow. So that's Hitmon useless. Meanwhile, several great fighting moves by oh, level wow. and has better offensive stats to use these moves with. Yeah. Yes, Hitmonchan has higher defense, but with a pitiful 50 base HP, I don't think that the difference in defense will really help all that much. Double kick, rolling kick, Hitmon jump kick, high jump kick. not being able to hit ghosts, the only Generation 1 ghost types are in the Gengar line. Yeah. And let's just say the Ghastly elemental Haunter punches Gengar. are a less than viable option against them. And if you're really worried about the shallow move pool of the two Hitmons, you might as well go with the Machoke. Even though you can't fully evolve it without trading, it has cover That's to right. use Earthquake and Rock Slide, oh, wow. better overall defenses, and just five less base attack than Hitmonchan. Look, I'm all for making the player choose between one of two Pokemon, but if there is a one choice that's objectively worse, why would you ever pick that one? Hmm. Next, we'll take a look at the rock ground types available, being the Geodude line, the Rhyhorn line, and Onyx. And to my surprise, it's Onyx that ends up being really subpar. At a glance, you would think Onyx is better than the Geodude line, considering that you're stuck with a Graveler if you can't trade up to Golem. 
Oh, that's right. You know what? In Gen 1, I loved Onyx, but I knew it was garbage. I knew, like, it was just weak to everything. So, But yeah. even Geodude on its own is going to be doing more for you than Onyx in several ways. I loved you Onyx, too, but I knew this. Mount Moon. Meanwhile, you have to wait until Rock Tunnel to get an to Onyx. Get Onyx yep. Plus, Onyx has a lower encounter rate and catch rate than Geodude, so you're likely to spend more time trying to get one. And when you look at its stats, Geodude alone has higher HP and attack. Okay, I'm interested in this. Yeah, oh wow, it's... And the huh. same special compared to Onyx. Really? And when you get Graveler, that difference in HP ends up making Onyx's higher defense next to unnoticeable. Look at that attack, so at that wow. Point, all you're left with on Onyx is higher speed. Yeah. And that's nice, but what are you going to do with it? Bind the opponent to death? With base 45 attack? Unlikely. And Onyx doesn't look any better when compared to Rhyhorn either. Yet again, Onyx has the lower encounter and catch rates, but it's also caught 10 levels lower than Rhyhorn. Really? And while yes, Onyx is available earlier, the only things to do between obtaining the two are the Rocket Game Corner, Pokemon Tower, and Snorlax. And if you use the Pokedoll glitch on the Marowak, you can skip the Game Corner altogether. Hmm. Making up that 10 level difference in that short span isn't worth your time. And when you look at their stats, Rhyhorn's high HP gives it physical defense almost as good as Onyx's, again, just like with Graveler. And with great attack and I would always special, go on Onyx, that leaves but... Onyx with its impressively average 70 base speed again. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> and if you look at Rhydon, yeah, Onyx Oof. doesn't stand a chance. Nah. And throughout all of this, besides the slow strategy of bind, Onyx doesn't get any notable moves compared to either of these lines, whether through level up or TM. And so that leaves Onyx as being underwhelming and worst overall. This one yeah. particularly surprised me. I always assumed that Onyx was good enough to establish itself from the other two, but the more I looked into it, the more disappointing it looked. Yeah. But hey, at least Onyx will always be impressive in the show, right? Yeah. Mm, okay, maybe not. <laughs> Moving on. To finish off this list, I'll be talking about fire types. When you take the Charmander the line out of the system, equation, that's right. there that's really aren't Onyx, many fire right? types available to use in Gen 1. In fact, the only two available in both red and blue are the Ponyta line and Flareon. In really? the Pokemon community, there's a common sentiment that Flareon is just awful. Like, straight garbage. But if I'm being honest, I think Ponyta is the worst of the two. Huh. By a significant margin. For one, you obtain Ponyta much later than every other fire. Oh yeah, so normally I think I'd go with Growlithe and Arcanine here, and I'm pretty sure even in the run that I never completed on my channel, I always go with, with uh, Growlithe, because Arcanine's a monster, man. Um, so this one doesn't really affect me. I never was a big fan of Ponyta or Rapidash. Like Dugong, they kind of just felt like Pokemon built to be mediocre, like he said before, but... Type. Depending on which version why. you're playing, you can either obtain Growlithe or Vulpix as early as Route 7 and 8, as well as Eevee in Celadon City, while you have to wait all the way until Pokemon Mansion on Cinnabar Island to obtain Ponyta. Plus, you can evolve the prior three at any point with a Firestone, where you'd be waiting until level 40 to get Rapidash. Oh, jeez. Sure, you may miss out on Flamethrower on Growlithe or Vulpix if you evolve it too early, but that's better than not having the choice of Flamethrower at all. Neither Ponyta or Rapidash can learn Flamethrower in Generation really? 1. In fact, in Gen the one. only fire types who can't learn Flamethrower in Generation 1. <laughs> that leaves you with Ember and Fire Spin for fire coverage, as Yikes. well as Fire Blast, which every other fire type gets too. Yeah. But let's be honest. Why would you bother using Rapidash for fire type moves? That sounds like a dumb question, with it literally being a fire type, until you realize that Rapidash has the lowest special stat of all fully evolved fire types. Oh. Well, technically it's tied with Arcanine, but I'd be surprised if anybody would make the claim that Arcanine is worse than Rapidash. Yeah, you no. Are, fight me in the comments. What this means is that a fire type move coming from Rapidash is worse than the same move coming from any other fully evolved fire type. Really? So if you're not using Rapidash for fire moves, what do you use it for? The answer would be normal moves, since yeah. normal and fire are the only types of attacking moves Rapidash can get. Stomp. And this leads me back to my earlier statement about how it's just better to go with Flareon. Flareon is in a similar position, also only getting fire and normal type moves, but at least it has the stats to use them. While yes, Rapidash has the speed advantage, I'll ask again like I did with Onyx. What are you doing with that speed? Yeah, not much. Personally, I'd rather take the 30-point advantage in both attack and special that Flareon provides, especially since Rapidash doesn't get any better moves than Flareon either. 
Overall, all these factors combined just make Rapidash a really underwhelming fire type. There's nothing it excels in over anything else, so why bother using it? Or hey, maybe your goal is to one-hit KO horn drill everything, in which case, Rapidash is the way to go. <laughs> and there you have it. I'll always have a soft spot for the original 151 Pokemon, yeah, but that so... doesn't mean that some of them aren't just awful in their debut generation, with some still being subpar to this day. And to be honest, there are probably a few more that are equally as bad I could have thrown onto the list. Far if you have any ideas of other bad Pokemon, leave a comment and tell me why you think they're trash. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, and be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Yeah, so that was a pretty interesting video. Um, I wouldn't say my opinion has changed too much on the Pokemon that I used, but I am a little shocked about Pidgeot. Obviously, the first Pokemon that he dropped, I was like, no way. You know, I know it was in the uh, thumbnail as well, but I, I wasn't sure how bad Pidgeot was. When you compare it to uh, Spiro and Firo, it's... That whole line stinks. That's a shame. I wonder if that's only a Gen 1 thing. You guys let me know in the comments if you made it to this video. Does Pidgey, Pidgeot get better in later in the series? <laughs> to Zonix as well? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I don't know new Pokemon as well as I do old Pokemon. And I even then I kind of forgot a lot. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was me reacting to Shep's, uh, Shepsky Dad's The Worst Gen 1 Pokemon. I'll see you guys for more content in the future.